Hello friends, today I want to share this book called Mama Dug a Little Den by Jennifer Ward. And it's a really neat story because it tells about different types of animal homes that animals around the world make in their habitats. It's an amazing world we live in. Mama dug a little den beneath a fallen tree, an earthy home as soft as moss, a nursery for three. Here we see our three little foxies. A red fox mother digs a maternity den, a place specifically to give birth to her kits. The father fox will supply food to the mother and kits, but he does not enter the den. So lots of animals like foxes will build a den underground or under rocks or uh, fallen logs as a nice place to, to shelter their family from, the, from predators and the weather. Mama dug a little den, then tucked herself away to, to pass the chill of winter time and da days so bare and gray. Hibernaculum is the term for a place that animals use to sleep through the chill of winter. When weather is extreme and food is scarce, in Latin it means Lent for winter quarters. Land toads create a hibernaculum by burrowing deep in soil. They remain there through the winter, keeping snug beneath the earth's frost line. It's much warmer underground. And just like frogs, uh, toads and salamanders are, are cold-blooded animals, so their body temperatures go down when the weather temperatures go down and so that's a way for them to uh, rest until the weather gets warmer. Mama dug a little den within a bubbling stream, a rugged lodge of sticks and twigs where we could grow and dream. Here's our beaver buddies. Beavers build a den or lodge within a water source by harvesting tree branches and logs with their teeth. Entry to the lodge in, is underwater and le leads to chambers above. Both parents raise their kits who remain with them for two years. Yearlings, the one-year-old babies, help maintain the lodge and babysit new offspring. So they learn how to be beaver parents by taking care of their little brothers and sisters. Isn't that amazing? We have a lot of beavers because we're so close to the Illinois River and Lick Creek. So it's fun to learn about the animals that share our world. And isn't it amazing? They build their homes out of those wood saplings. And if they get hungry, they can nibble right on their home. <laughs> Mama dug a little den, a furrow in the ground. She hid a nut down in its depths so it would not be found. Red and gray squirrels scatter hoard, gathering and burying nuts in small holes. They dig in the ground all over the place. They use their great sense of smell to locate their stashes, digging to retrieve their snacks. If a buried nut is left behind, it may grow into a new tree. Remember those nuts are the fruits of the uh, plant, like an acorn is the fruit of the oak tree. And inside that seed is food that the squirrels can eat, but it also has a baby plant inside that may start to grow. Ooh, look at this interesting animal. Mama dug a little den in tree roots, dark and damp, a river house with walls of mud so we could swim and camp. The platypus, an egg-laying mammal, digs a den for resting and nesting near water. Females lay one to three eggs that hatch in about 10 days. Once hatched, 
the young nurse for up to four months and then swim off to live on their own. So they grow very quickly. This is a very unusual animal because usually mammals give live birth. So they are, they are like uh, other egg layers in some ways, but they feed their baby's mo uh, mother's milk. So a very interesting animal to learn about. Mama dug a little den, a cave of sparkling snow. She kept us close and warm and fed while wind, winds outside would blow. The female polar bear digs a maternity den, a large hole in a snowbank. Here she will live for several months giving birth to her cubs and caring for them completely on her own. The dad is not part of their upbringing and in fact might attack and eat the cubs so she has to protect those cubs from the father. Cubs venture out of their den for the first time at about four months of age and stay with their mother for almost three years. It takes a long time for those cubs to learn everything they need to know to become adult polar bears. It's a very, very challenging habitat for them to learn and grow in. Mama dug a little den to hide out from the sun, since baking in the desert isn't fun for anyone. In the Sonoran Desert, one of the hottest deserts in the world, animals must adapt to survive the extreme heat. The desert's Gila monster uses a burrow year-round, remaining in the depths when temperatures are highest and venturing out when the sun isn't too intense. So a lot of times they'll burrow underneath cacti and rocks. It's cooler underground in the desert. Here in, in our part of the world, it's warmer underground in the winter and year round. But in the desert where it's so hot, this is a, so many animals will make their homes underground or in fact in cacti. They'll drill holes and make nests in the cactus. They can uh, stay cool in there. They have the protection of all those spines to protect them from predators. And so it's a very sensible way for those animals to survive in that very, very difficult habitat. And we see all these little spines on our cactus which protect the cactus from animal predators, but they also help to absorb water that's in the air to help be, the cactus uh, retain some water from the air. Remember in the desert, they only get about 10 to 11 inches of rain in a whole year. So water is so important that they want to preserve it any way you can. In the desert, those cacti become a source of food for many animals and an important home too. People even eat cactus, isn't that interesting? Mama dug a busy den that spanned across the land, a crowded place with many pails, pals and tunnels far and grand. Here we see all those little prairie dogs. Prairie dog families create a huge network of underground burrows called towns. It is so fun to see prairie dog towns. They burrow the burrows contain nurseries for babies, places for sleeping, and even areas that they use as a toilet, that midden pile that we talked about. Other animals inhabit these burrows too, including snakes, owls, and black-footed ferrets, which hunt prairie dogs. So they have to be very careful because some of their chief predators live underground very close by. They always have to have several ways to get out of their tunnels in case a predator comes calling. The largest known prairie 
black-tailed prairie dog town covered 25,000 square miles in Texas and was home to approximately 400 million prairie dogs. Wow, that's incredible. Mama dug a little den, a place to hide and wait for some great feast to wander by and meet its final fate. Uh-oh, this grasshopper better watch out because this tarantula is ready to run up and catch it for supper. Most species of tarantula are burrows, burrowers, although many spiders spin webs to catch Prey. Tarantulas do something different. They will wait inside their burrows for a potential meal, such as a cricket or grasshopper, to pass by, and then they ambush it, just like that. Sometimes burrowing spiders will spin uh, some spider silk in there that's sticky that will help to trap their prey inside their burrow. Uh-oh, who do we see now? Mama dug a little den, and even with its smell, our home was cozy, snug, and safe. We babies loved it well. Skunks sometimes dig a den, but they usually find an abandoned one created by another animal and then line it with leaves and grasses. It will be used year-round for resting, hiding, birthing, and raising two to twelve kits. And I would think that after a skunk has moved into one of those dens, other animals will stay out because of a certain aroma that they emit that helps to protect them from their predators. <laughs> Mama made a little den of hillside brush and boulder. We pounced, we purred. We called it home until we grew much older. Look at those little rascals. A mother bobcat creates a maternity den in a place such as a hollow log, boulder shelter, cave, or depression in a hillside that buffers and protects her from weather and predators. There she'll give birth to one to six kittens who remain with her until they're almost a year old. Did you know that here in Illinois, there are bobcats that live here? It's amazing to think of the variety of animals that share our state of the Illinois. Mama dug a little den along a river's bluff. We stayed inside our grassy nest till I grew strong and tough. Excellent at digging, armadillos create several dens to retreat into when feeling threatened. Females dig a maternity den where they will give birth to one to 12 babies called pups. Pups nurse for two to four months, maturing between nine to 12 months of age. Did you know that we now have armadillos in Illinois too? They've been coming up from the south. I think that's very exciting. Mama found a little den, a hiding place for sleeping. And each day as the sun would set, we bunnies took to leaping. Eastern cottontail rabbits, unlike their European cousins, do not dig dens. They may find and use an abandoned burrow, or they may scratch a shallow den or form among weeds and brambles. The den offers shelter for resting and for raising their young. Out in the garden, sometimes in our vegetable boxes, there'll be little areas where it's been dug out and lined with feathers and little grasses, and that's where they had a bunny nest in there. It's so fun to see. Sometimes the bunnies will lay right in our garden beds and sprawl in the sunshine. They just love it in our storybook garden. Mama dug a sandy den beneath the pale moonlight. She laid her eggs within its depths, then buried them out of sight. A female sea turtle leaves her dream ocean home to come ashore and lay her eggs, usually at night. 
She digs a sandy cavity to lay them into, then covers them with sand and returns to the sea. Burying the eggs helps to maintain the proper temperatures necessary for hatching and protects them from predators. And you notice it's a full moon. That's when a lot of animals will have their young or lay their eggs. It's an important part of life for animals, the moon cycles. Perhaps you'll come across a den dark and deep and wide, and it will make you wonder who or what might be inside. When you go out in your yard or out to McNaughton Park, oftentimes you will see little doorways at the bases of trees and those are usually openings to underground burrows. In the winter, like it is now, oftentimes you'll see different footprints, which you can learn uh, to identify to see who is living underneath that tree, under the ground, beneath your feet. These types of activities connect us with the animals that share our wor world and make it very fun to be a nature detective. So go out and be on the lookout for uh, homes beneath your feet or in trees. Uh, nature is an endless uh, source of so many fun adventures and learning. Until I see you next time, enjoy this beautiful day.